Welcome to Research Tools 2011 Video 9 Python Part 3 Parts. My name is Kurt Schwer and I'll be talking today about the various components that go into writing software in Python and we'll take a quick look at all the pieces that go together and you'll start seeing how to be able to put together larger software. So I'm going to go ahead and create myself a directory here, make dir video slash 9 and I'm going to copy from my Dropbox account video 9 into video 9 in my working area and we'll go take a look in there video 9 alright there we go and we'll bring it up in Emacs so control X control F and we'll go into video 9 and open up that file I'm going to use shift tab to collapse up all of my outline for this video and we'll take a look at assignments are sort of the fundamental thing and we'll start up IPython and take a look at those assignments so here we are in IPython and assignments are fairly basic it's assigning some sort of value to a variable so here we'll try two different ones we'll try depth and ship name so depth equals 25.2 and we can say type depth and it tells us that this is a floating point notice though that we don't actually have the units on there so if you're writing code if we have over here you probably want to write things like comments with your units on there so that it's clear exactly what's going on with your variable um, you can also set variables to be strings so ship name equals rv flip now remember with ipython we can always say who to list our variables or whose with an s to list our variables in there and if we want to get rid of a variable we can say del or del so del ship name and now if we type whose we only have our depth in there so that's basic assignments go ahead and collapse that up and let's take a look at an important data type called dictionaries dictionaries are basic lookup tables and we can say a dict equals they're created with curly braces and we can say one gets one nine gets nine and eight gets eight and we'll get rid of my typo nine and we'll hit enter and see if we're okay now this dictionary we can say type a dict and show hopefully write back dict for dictionary and in a dictionary it's a lookup table so we can use anything that's on the left hand side to find what's on the right hand side so we can say a dict sub nine and get back that it's from nine now we can also add keys that are not necessarily integers we can say a dict and we can add anything we want here so we'll say 10 and we'll get make that returned back to us 10 get the syntax right there so square brackets with your key inside so this is the key right here and this is the value you're assigning to it so now if we type a dict except we use the underscore then it will actually give us the right thing back now we can also ask it what our keys are so we can say a dict dot keys and it will return to us a list of just the things that make up the keys so that's very handy let's take a look at something that might actually be a little bit more like something we'd use we can copy that with meta w and let's go ahead and paste this in and so now we have calibration parameters and we can then say keys and now we have a list of our calibration parameters that we have around and we can say calibration parameters the tab is what I'm hitting to make it jump forward so fast and we can say what's the length of our ship and we get back a number 
So very handy. You'll probably be using this a lot when you start programming a lot of Python. Very helpful. And so the key things are that you can look them up with the square brackets. You can list all of them with the dot keys parentheses. And you can add more keys by taking your dictionary, um, doing what looks like the lookup, but then setting an equal to a value. And it will then put it into the dictionary as a new value or replace an existing one if it has the same name. That's dictionaries in a quick, quick look. And now the next big feature that we're going to work on is functions. So I'm going to slide this over to the left to make my life a little easier. And we'll bring the shell over to the right so we can follow along hopefully a little easier. And let's go ahead and create some functions. We can say def hello to parentheses and a colon print hello press enter twice and we've now created our function so we can say type hello and we have a function so what exactly is a function this is basically a way to capture groups of code that do things for you so it's kind of a macro like thing or basically record some behavior you'd like to play back. So we can actually call that and what you do after we uh, we'll, we'll do this real quick we'll say hello and then two parentheses and we've called hello which went inside and did what was inside. So let's talk a little bit about this. So we start off the definition of a function with DEF for definition. Then you have the name of your function right here and this is how you're going to call it later on. And after this, we have two parentheses, and right now we don't pass it anything, but if you need to give it information, this is where that goes. And then the colon says we're ready to start a uh, function. Now remember in Python, the key thing to changing blocks, there's no parentheses around groups of code, so we actually have to indent our code like we did with the for loop. And in there, once we're indented, we can say uh, some function. So we just did a print. You could do all kinds of functions, and you could do many of them. So that's your very basic function. Let's go ahead and do something a little bit more interesting, because that function didn't actually return anything. Let's go ahead and grab this one, meta w, paste that in. And in this function, I'm going to press Enter twice. We define a function called sound speed. It takes no parameters, and it's actually going to return to us something that it's calculating. So here it's adding two numbers and then returning us back the value. So let's go ahead and call that. So we can type sound speed. Now notice that here in the hello, we actually got back a string that was printed out to the screen, and we didn't get any output that we could actually keep and use. Here, with the sound speed, with the return call, we actually get a return value that comes back to us that we can use. So we can say ss, this is a really bad variable and it's hard to, to follow, but we could say sound speed, press enter, and now ss is our sound speed. So type ss is our floating point number that we got back from that function. So this way you could be calculating all kinds of stuff and then you can save it into a value. It makes it a lot easier than handling large calculations. Let's try out something that takes a quick uh, parameter or two. So we'll do um, def get area. So this is going to do a calculation for us. So we're going to pass it in the length and the width of our area. And we're now indented and we can say area equals length times width. And I'm doing it slightly differently in the notes just to break it a little more and show you a multiple line one. So return area, press return twice. And so now we can say type get area and if you notice here, it actually added the parentheses because I was lazy and forgot to put them in yet again. Okay, so we now have a function that can calculate area. So we can say get area 11 or 10.1 times 
two, but you don't need to do the times. So it's a comma in between, so 11.2. And if we press enter, it's now taken the number that was in here, put it into length, taken this number, the 11.2, and put it into width. Substitute those in. Inside, it then used this area equals length times width, and then it returned our area. So that's a basic function taking parameters. Um, this is pretty nice, but if you look so far, we haven't actually saved anything. So let's actually um, build something that we can work with a little bit. And if we look in here, we have a more interesting function. I'm going to copy this, w, and let's call it video9.py. And I'm going to paste this in here. And what we've done is we've created a Python function that will import math. It will then cr uh, create a function called distance. And we can then work with that distance. And it does some complicated math for us in here. So let's save that. Control X, Control S. And if we say uh, import distance, or sorry, import video 9. We now have video 9.distance. If I type it right, video 9.distance. And we can now say 1, 2 and 4, 4. And we now know the distance between those two points is that. It's 3.6 and some change. So let's see, we also have something in here that's important to notice in that we've actually got a string right after the beginning of a function. This is referred to as a doc string or documentation string. And that's actually attached to the function and can give you help when you're uh, working with this code later on. Even if you wrote it, you may need to get help from it later on if you've forgotten what you've been doing. If you have tens of thousands of lines of code, that's pretty easy to do. So we can say distance and a question mark. And now it comes up with the basic help. This stuff is all generated by Python, don't worry about it. But here you can see x1, y1, x2, y2 are our parameters. And our doc string right here has been printed out for us so that we can remember what our code does. So this is what's called a module. So we're starting to build up a module of things that go together so we can actually save those functions. And that becomes very handy as you build yourself a library of code to work with. Let's go back to our notes. and. There's another unit of work that's called a class. It's more powerful than a function, and it kind of contains something that, that's basically a function or, or often referred to as a method inside of it. And a class represents something and knows how to work with it. And so it basically brings together data and functions together into one area so that they can work together and they know about each other. So let's copy this circle class. In fact, maybe I'll just type it to go slow. And so let's create a class called circle. And almost all classes will now inherit from this thing called object. So don't really worry about this is, what this is for a class, but it's always going to be there, or something similar will be there for you. If you see that. Now, there's some special methods that you need to know about with classes. And these tend to come with underscores. So I'm going to create something called init. This is what gets called when you create a new circle. And this is a function that works on an init, or is an init that works on a circle. And self is a reference to the object that's being created. And radius is a parameter coming in. So when we create a circle, we're going to pass in just a radius. And what we like to do when we create a circle is we want to store that radius in our self. So we can always say self dot and then some parameter and store it in there. So we take that radius that's coming in as an argument and we save it into our self, our object. And we want to be able to do something with that object so we can create a function otherwise known as a method inside of that function or that class. So self colon 
return 2 times math.py. So we're going to use pi r squared and self.radius. Now this is where it gets fun. We are able to know the radius that's attached to our self and we can do that to the power of 2. So pi r squared. And if you're feeling a little bit nervous about precedence, which happens when with the stars, we can always protect that with a nice set of parentheses. So now we can say def, and we have another funny one, str, and this is a string. So this funny function, if you ask for this object to get turned into a string, this is the method that gets called. So you can basically create whatever so we could say whatever, and if we did that, we're going to get back whatever whenever we ask for the string, but we probably want to do something that's interesting. So a circle of area, a space, and we'll add to it the string representation of a self dot radius. So basically this is going to print a circle of and then the radius. So that's our nice little class, and we can say uh, now, if you remember right, instead of just doing import, we also need to do a reload of video 9 to be able to pull it in. And now we can say video 9.circle, and let's give it a radius of 10.2, and we can say my circle equals that. So we now have a circle, we can say type my circle. And it actually tells us that it's a class of type video 9 circle. So this is uh, handy. We can now ask that circle to tell us its area. So dot get area. Call that method. And we now know the area of that circle. Now let's also try the string representation of that. So we can say str my circle, and it returns us the string circle of area 10, area 10.2. That should be radius of 10.2. So we can now have our first bug. We say radius of 10.2, much better. And we say reload our um, video 9. Now we still have that object, we should say del my circle, and we'll then have to recreate our circle by going back up here. So now if we say str my circle, we now have a string that says circle of radius 10.2. Looks a lot better. So we have our nice little module that consists of a function, a class, and let's actually go and set some variables and we'll say ship name equals RV flip. And let's go ahead, save that, and we'll come back here and say reload video 9. So now we can say video 9 period. Press tab and you'll now get everything that comes in with all the options. You're starting to learn some of these underscores. So we've looked at the init right in here, and we've also looked at the underscore, underscore, string, underscore, underscore. Not very fun to say, but definitely useful stuff to have. And if we look in here too, this is our distance function right here. And um, we have our ship name down here that we've set. and Way back up here, sorted funny is our circle up there with capitals coming up before our underscores. So let's try out our ship name real quick. So we could say ship name, and there's our ship name. So that's it for this time. That was the basics of the pieces that you'll be using to build up Python code. There's lots of little details to go with them that we'll flush out, but that's the overview of setting variables in statements and creating functions where you can capture some code that does a particular task and classes where you can group code and data together and have these sort of wrappers that handle uh, things. Thanks for joining me and uh, I hope you come back for more.